Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan. Take a walk on the wacky side. Dr. Fan. Find some fun that is bona fide. Dr. Fan. For a twist that you never try, you'll be glad. Give it, Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan. Something silly to last for days. Dr. Fan. Gadgets guaranteed to amaze can be had. Here, Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan. Pull out your pogo stick and check your mood ring. Tell Gumby and Pokey to hurry up and dress up Barbie because it's time for the Dr. Fad Show, the game show that gives you a sneak peek at the gizmos and thingamajigs and brainstorms that just might be the next Frisbee or Hula Hoop. See tomorrow's fads today on the Dr. Fad Show. And here's your host, a man who's a close personal friend of Mr. Potato Head, Dr. Fad! Let's see some of the wacky inventions our audience brought with them today. Who's got a great invention here, huh? Who's got something? Who's got something? What have you got here? Easy to use chopsticks. <laughs> there. You, all you have to do is squeeze if you don't really know how uh -huh. to chop, use I chopsticks. See. You have problems with ordinary chopsticks that are just split up here? Yeah. So this way you can, you can pick up uh, little peas yeah. or little pieces of rice, huh? Mm -hmm. That's great. What's your name? Laura. Let's hear it for Laura and her easy chopsticks here. Who else is something here, huh? Who else is something? It's a double kite flyer. You can fly two it's kites at once. kite flyer? I thought it's William Tell's arrow or something like that, bow and arrow. It's a kite flyer? Yeah, you can fly two kites at once. Mm -hmm. You just, you could... Like, one kite here, the other one goes there? Yeah. And, and the uh, clamp could hook onto a wheelchair, a chair, or a banister. I see. So you can control. It's like having two fishing lines out at the same time, huh? Right. What's your name? Brian Smith. Let's hear it for Brian and his uh, double easy kite flyer. Uh, you have something here, don't you? You want to yeah. stand up? My invention is called the tea bag clip. You want to hold this? The tea bag clip, huh? Uh, there's a tea bag here, and I guess very often your tea bag just gets sunk right into the teacup, and you can't get it out this way. You can always get it out this way, huh? Great. What's your name? Yeah. Brian Spadachin. Let's hear it for Brian and his tea bag clip. That's great. They're all great inventions. As you can see, our show is all about creating and inventing. We've interviewed hundreds of kids, checked out their ideas, and chosen the best inventors to join us on the Dr. Fad Show. They'll demonstrate their brilliant creations for points and prizes with our studio audience as the judge. And we'll put our contestants to the test. They'll have to create something new right on the spot in our fad lab. And Jim, did we mention the part about the grand prize? No, we didn't, but we're about to. Strap yourselves in, fadsters, because our grand prize is a trip on the Earth Channel program to Epcot Center at Walt Disney World. That's great, Jim. So who's up first today? Shannon Trainer. Come on. Welcome to the show, inventors. Okay, guys, it's time to get ready for our first round, and this is called the Fad Lab Challenge, okay? Here's how it works. The winner of this round is going to receive 30 points, the first runner-up 20 points, and the second runner-up 10 points, okay? Dr. Fad, what is today's first Fad Lab Challenge? Today's Fad Lab Challenge is called the Moving Kool-Aid Challenge. Your task is to move as much Kool-Aid as you can from the fish bowl to the cylinder using all the tools that we provided for in the Fad Lab. But remember, you can't touch the water, the Kool-Aid, with your hand, and also you can't directly tilt out of the fishbowl. The one who moves the most Kool-Aid into the cylinder is the winner. Got it? Got, got it. Run into the Fad Lab. The Fad Lab. And now it's time to present the prestigious, the esteemed, the highly coveted and sought after Golden Gizmo Award. Today's Golden Gizmo Award goes to the Super Bowl. That's right. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a Super Bowl. Able to leap over a three-story building in a single bounce. Created under 3,500 pounds of pressure, this is one energy-charged blob of rubber. 
The Super Bowl bounced into the news in 1965. It was invented by a California chemist named Norman Stingley. He worked to perfect the purplish, supercharged sphere of rubber. And by the summer of 1965, Super Bowls were all the rage, an unqualified fad. And every Super Bowl, regardless of size, will do all the famous Super Bowl tricks, the snapback, the Super Bowl around the world, and Super Bowl around the table return. It's the kind of Super Bowl that would make Superman proud. And now, the man whose super marketing stunts helped the Super Bowl bounce into the headlines, Ed Hedrick! Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Welcome to the show. Hi, Ed. Welcome to the show. Hey, where's my Super Bowl? Oh, oh. Now, Ed, I understand that the Super Bowls are literally all over the world. Yes, sir. They're in the Eiffel Tower. At least they were on the Eiffel Tower uh -huh. until they fell down accidentally. <laughs> They were in the Louvre Museum in Paris. The, uh -huh. There's one in orbit that we don't talk about. There's one going around, oh, yeah. around the world, huh? I think it's over Russia right now. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> and Ed, uh, I understand that uh, your kids came up with the name Super Bowl. Is That's that correct? correct? They were fans of Superman, oh, of course. Sure. And any ball that would do something like this, Whoa. Whoa. needless to say, Here we go. is a Super Bowl, right? That's neat. Here's Why don't you show us a couple of these Here's uh, one, tricks Super Bowl here. under the table. Wow! Is that not bad? All right. And then Super Bowl will do. It has powers things. beyond me. Powers beyond. Goodbye. <laughs> It'll be back after a while. They always, right, a good right. Super Bowl always returns. Well, here, here's uh, another oh, Super Bowl here. Please. Now, uh, oh, Ed, uh, it's on behalf of the Dr. Fad Show. See, I told you. <laughs> they always come back. It's my pleasure to present you with this packaged, gift-wrapped, yeah, golden gizmo award. And uh, be careful because oh, it's glass, OK? And hold so, it very carefully. I'm honored, I tell you. Oh, my. Oh, oh, hey. Hey. Ah! Dr. Fan. What, what, what happened to that? Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan. The Dr. Fad Show will be right Dr. back Fad. after these messages. Now return to the Dr. Fad Show. Time's up in the Fad Lab. Let's see what our contestants are doing. Okay, let's pull back those barriers okay, and see who transferred right the most Kool-Aid. Okay, Keith has transferred wow. 480 milliliters of wow. Kool-Aid. Good going, Keith. Doug has transferred 60 millimeters of pink Kool-Aid. All right. And Shannon here has transferred about 20 milliliters and a little thimble of Kool-Aid. That makes the winner of this Fat Lab Challenge, Keith, who has transferred the most green Kool-Aid. All right. What does that make the score? Keith wins the Fat Lab Challenge with 30 points. Doug has 20 points. And Shannon has 10 points. Your Kool-Aid may still be in your fishbowl, but you can make up to 70 points in the brainstorm round where the audience is going to vote on which of your fantastic ideas they like best. We're going to start with Keith and uh, what do you call this contraption here? This is called is the mean cleanup machine. I thought it was a Zamboni or something like that, but it's the I'll mean demonstrate. cleanup machine. And, uh, do you undo the safety over uh -huh. here? You let go the ramp. You have an especially messy room. Is that why you yeah. came up with this for or, um, major? Toys and then are scattered all move it around room. with your feet. Uh huh. Oh, I see. And sweep. I different. Your mom likes this one. Now. Different toys into the into the toy box. I see, and, uh, and all, um, all your toys go in there. And if it's like on the ramp, like here. Uh huh. Or, then you can pull this string and cool. pull it. Up. I see. So sort of a fortress effect there. So this is like to make kids want to clean up. Make them want to. Because it's fun to ride around in this, huh? Mm -hmm. right. Let's hear it for Keith and his mean cleanup machine. Okay, and uh, Doug has something here. Uh, what do you call your invention here? Siv, stay in bed. Stay in bed, and uh, how does this work? Well, I attached a, a string from my bedpost to my closet, mm -hmm. and I attached another string and uh, tied it to a hanger. And then when I want to get up in the morning... You're I, lazy, you don't want to go yeah. to the closet I do to get your shirt. I do, pull the string, and uh -huh. the clothes come to my bed. And you get your clothes and you can change. And uh, even Rambo has some lazy days sometimes. He would want a uh, stay in bed, right? Yep. Let's hear it for Doug and his stay in bed. Uh, and Shannon, uh, what have you done to Jim here? Uh, 
This is called the Household Helper, and it's a cleaning suit to make cleaning easier. Everything is on it? Yeah. Uh, we need a little paper towel right over here. And you can throw it in the garbage can. And then you throw it in the garbage and can. And various and, uh, things Velcroed on there. If you want a little brush off here, brush off my wall walkers. And then you stick Rag, it right back, rags, pack. everything. If you want a little bit of spray, shh, right? And uh, then when you're all done, you just throw it in the trash can. Like that, huh? Yep. And I guess this would also keep you clean, you know, keep your clothes That's clean. That's true. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it for Shannon and her household helper. OK, kids in the audience and kids at home, it's time for you to be the judge. Which of these great inventions do you like best? Shannon and her household helper. Doug and his stay in bed. Or Keith and his mean cleanup machine. Whoa. I guess the overwhelming winner of this brainstorm round is Keith and his mean cleanup machine. Jim, let's head up to two rounds and find out who our champion is. Our second runner-up is Shannon. Our first runner-up, Doug. And our grand prize winner with a perfect score, 100 points, Keith. 100 points. Congratulations here. And Jim, what are the prizes for our contestants? Dr. Pat, all of our contestants are going to be receiving sneakers from L.A. Gear. L.A. Gear is the number one choice in fashion, athletic footwear, cotton colors, and high style. Perfect for everyone. L.A. Gear and the Ray-Ban Smart Star Collection from Bausch & Lomb. They're what's happening in kids' fashion. Serious sunglasses for kids who want to look their coolest. And a gift certificate from Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store on the cutting edge of style and performance. Come to the stripes at Foot Locker. And our grand prize winner will be going on a four-day odyssey to the Magic Kingdom and Epcot Center at the Walt Disney Resort. Splash down at SeaWorld and experience the Kennedy Space Center, Spaceport USA. Travel to a classroom unlike any you've ever seen. Welcome aboard our shuttle as you fly to Florida on Eastern Airlines to this unforgettable learning experience. The Dr. Fad Show will be right back after these messages. Dr. We now return to the Dr. Fad Show. Dr. Fad, come on up and meet Seth Cohen! Seth! Michelle Bellafato! Michelle! And Suzanne Burstein! Suzanne. Okay. Dr. Fad, what is today's second Fad Lab challenge? We call this one the Clay Boat Challenge. Waiting for in the Fad Lab is a lump of clay. Your mission is to transform it into a boat or a flotation device. Right, so build anything that will float, right guys? And it better float really well, because when you're done, we're gonna test your boat by placing marbles in them. Ooh, and whoever's boat can have the, hold the most marbles will win. You got it? Got it? Run to the fast lab! The fast lab! It's time to take another trip back in time to that fantastic year, 1969. About like 500,000 people gathered for the Woodstock Music Festival. Man, far out, peace and love, let the sun shine in. Come together, get together, someday we'll be together, but I can't get next to you, and he ain't heavy, he's my brother. The year was 1969, man, and like you are there. Richard Nixon was president. Our boys were in Vietnam. The monkeys were on TV. John Lennon married Yoko Ono, and Muhammad Ali was tops in the ring. And the fads? Oh, wow, we really didn't call them fads back then. It was just like doing your thing. Like there were mini skirts, body paint, and paper dresses. How many people do you know who have paper dresses in their closet? A fad flop, man. Oh, oh, wow, Dad. Don't bum me out. The whole tribe is going to the Love Inn, and I gotta make this scene. Where? Oh, wow. I mean, it's, it's like, it's everywhere. It's within us, and without us, and it's all too beautiful to believe. Peace, man. I mean, Dad, look, I'm all ready. I got my bell-bottom pants, and oh, my flower vest. Moonchild did the embroidery. Isn't it psychedelic? Now, 
All I gotta do is put on one last thing, my headband, and then I'll be all ready, okay? How do I look? Dad, don't be so middle class. And that's what was groovy and happening back in 1969. We now leave that fantastic year and return you to the present. Time's up in the Fad Lab. OK, let's pull back the barriers and see who's made the sturdiest flotation device. Contestants, bring your clay boats to the tanks. OK, now place your boats in very gently into, onto the water. OK, they're all floating. Now we give them the marble test. You're going to add marbles two at a time. And I want the audience to count with us. Count along with us, guys. Ready? Ready? Two. Two. Hold on. Two. Hold it. Seth, come on. Two. Two. Four. Four. Six. Six. Eight. Eight. Oh, oh. there goes Seth Boat. Eight. Ten. Ten. Twelve. Twelve. Oh, there goes Suzanne's boat. Well, that makes the winner of this clay boat challenge, Michelle. Woo! And Jim, what does that make the score? Michelle wins the Fad Lab challenge with 30 points. Suzanne has 20, and Seth has 10 points. Fadsters, you both may have sank, but you can make up to 70 points in the brainstorm round where the audience is going to vote on which of your great inventions they like best. We're going to start with Suzanne, and you called your invention the pizza helper? Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, when I go out to dinner with my parents and I have pizza, my mom likes the crust, but I don't, and... No crust here, right? So, oh, this and pizza. She, I, she doesn't like the pizza, and I do. So I thought of this, and... So you have a hard time holding the pizza because there's no crust. Right, and my hands get all messy, uh -huh. and I, have, I need a lot of napkins. Uh -huh. So what you do... You take a bite, uh -huh. and then you push it forward. Oh, <laughs> I see. Then I you see. take another bite. And, and you can just keep keep pushing it forward and forward, huh? Uh-huh. As you eat more and more. And more do you, you don't do, waste any. Do you actually bring this to pizza parlors um, or just at home? Just at home. Here, have a bite here. <laughs> How fast can you eat? <laughs> I see. Let's hear it for Suzanne and her pizza helper. Good work, Suzanne. Great invention here. OK. Here we have uh, Michelle and uh, what do you call your invention? Energy size. The energy size. Now, this looks like a very complicated invention. You want to you tell us how you came up with this? Well, my mom um, always wanted an exercise bike. So she also likes watching TV. So I mm -hmm. thought if she wanted to ride a bicycle, she'd have to pedal and watch her own TV. I see. So your bicycle generates the electricity to turn the TV set on, oh, huh? I see. So yeah. if you really want to watch TV, you want to know what's going to happen, is you just got <laughs> to keep pedaling and pedaling, huh? You want to give it a try here? Okay. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> OK, well, this is how it works. Michelle's <laughs> Energy Sizer. Okay, Steph, okay, and we have Seth and his, what do you call your gadget here? Running machine. The running machine here, Seth. Running machine. <laughs> now, what is the principle of this? How did you come up with this? All right, well, um, one day, I was, it was a hot summer day, and I was, um, running, I was just running around the block with my friend, and the only thing that was reviving me was my radio, because I was just listening to my radio. It's so hot, and I don't know. And I, looked, and I looked down at my belt, I was running, and my pants were going up and down from the radio on my belt. <laughs> So your radio so, was dangling yeah, there, up yeah. and down, yeah? And so um, I went home and I said to my mom, this has got to end. I can't just run around with my pants falling down. So um, I went in my room and I found a sweatband, so uh -huh. that would stop so the sweat. So that'll keep your sweat right there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, the radio that I can listen to while uh -huh. I run, and then I have the straw I can drink while you running. Can drink, I can jog yeah, in right. place. I see. You. Okay, okay, jog in place. <laughs> and you got everything, everything on there. there. I, I see everything there. there. Sweatband, drinks, radio. The it's works. Really fun. Let's hear it for <laughs> Seth and his running machine. <laughs> kids at home and kids in the audience, now it's time for you to be the judge. Which of these great inventions do you like best? Suzanne and her pizza helper. <laughs> Michelle and her, and her energy sizer. <laughs> or Seth and his running machine. 
The winner of the brainstorm round is Seth and his running machine. All right. Jim, let's add up the two rounds and find out who the champion is. Our second runner-up with 55 points is Suzanne. Our first runner-up with 70 points is Seth. And our grand prize winner with 75 points is Michelle! Michelle, congratulations, huh? And Jim, what are the prizes for our contestants? Dr. Fad, all of our contestants will be receiving the Snow Fox. SLM Action Sports wants you to be the foxiest thing on the snow scene, riding on the new Snow Fox. And a gift certificate from Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store. On the cutting edge of style and performance, come to the stripes at Foot Locker. And White's Coin Master Metal Detector for hours of treasure hunting fun. With Feather Touch tuning to help you locate coins, jewelry, and precious metals from White's Electronics. And our grand prize winner goes on a trip on the Earth Shuttle program to Epcot Center at Walt Disney World. Woo! We're almost out of time, so let me tell you that if you'd like to become a contestant on a Dr. Fad show, send us, a, send us a letter with your name, address, phone number, and a photo of your invention to the Dr. Fad show, post office box 11777, Washington, D.C., 2008. See you on the next Dr. Fad show, and remember, don't just follow fads, create them! <laughs> Who's got a great invention here? Who's got something here, huh? Let's start with you here. You've got a bunch of napkins. You want to stand up? What, what is this? Um, I call it the napkin roller. The napkin cause, roller. Yeah, because when I was over at my grandmother's house, I couldn't reach the napkin. Mm -hmm. and, and I decided that if I just made this, I could just pull the string so I could reach the napkin. Oh, so you just roll the napkins to you. Great. Yeah. What's your name? Brooke Harris. Brooke. Let's hear it for Brooke and her napkin holder. Yeah.